Sarah. Good evening. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have anyone who would like to join us for public comment this evening? <laughs> Good evening. I'm Betty Moore, 375 Ocean Boulevard, and I'm here tonight on behalf of two different organizations. One is the Hampton Historical Society, and we are celebrating our 90th um, year this Saturday, July 18th, and we're having a birthday bash at the Tuck Museum, 40 Park Avenue, from 1 to 5. It's free. All are welcome. There's something for everyone. There are Vikings. There's Goody Cole. There are children's activities. The Garden Club is going to have a tent with those invasive weeds that are in your backyard and you don't know what they are. Um, Tuck Bats will be there with his bat making demonstration. We'll have face painting. Um, there'll be a art show and a tent with local history authors, so you'll get to meet artists and authors. There'll be a duck decoy carving demonstration. Um, and the Alumni Association is going to take over the schoolhouse and have yearbooks and talk about early education. We'll have films of historic interest, and the Masons are catering with hamburgers, hot dogs, baked beans, um, soft drinks for sale, but at 2.30 we're having birthday cake for everyone. So we'd love to have you join us. That's this Saturday, July 18th from 1 to 5 at the Tuck Museum. So that's one announcement. The second one is tying into this, the Congregational Church is having a lobster baked dinner. And it starts at 5 <coughs> o'clock. As we end up, they start. They are uh, have a limit of 200 people. So they are um, finishing up their ticket sales. So if, I think tomorrow is the last day you can buy one. Um, it will be starting at 5 o'clock at 127 Winnicunit Road at the church. There will be lobsters, clam chowder, corn, desserts, and ice cream. And the nice thing about this one is the proceeds benefit the town clock project in memory of Cliff Pratt, um, which that project was near and dear to him. So it's a kind of a nice way to end the day. Um, you can come start with us and with them, have plenty to eat, have a great time. And if you'd like a ticket, because tomorrow is the cutoff, you can call 926-2543. That's 926-2543, and um, we can get you a ticket. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else like to join us for a comment this evening? Seeing none, we'll move on to announcements in community calendar. Mr. Bean. I have nothing, sir. Thank you. Mrs. Wolseley. Nothing tonight. Mr. Wardell. Thank you. Um, just, there was an article on June 20th at the State Beach, the number of, uh, June 30th, I'm sorry, the number of uh, rescues that the lifeguards made, it was just phenomenal amount. I, I forget, I had it in my head and then I forgot old age coming here. But uh, I wanted to congratulate them on a, on a job well done. Wow. Well, I was going to mention the, uh, the 90th birthday, so she already got me that. I'd just like to say over the past two weekends, I know we haven't, since we last met, uh, we've had some very good weather at the beach. It's been very busy, but we've had some great weather. And I just want to thank our, our police officers and our firefighters and public works. Uh, they, they were taxed with a lot of people down there. I was down the beach on both Sundays, and the traffic was extreme, and um, it, everything seemed to go very well. So I want to thank our public employees for the good job they've done. Yeah. And I would just like to thank Betty Moore for what all that she does over at the Tech Museum. She's done a wonderful job, and to think that she got out and came here tonight just for that, <coughs> it's what really makes it all work. So thank you again. And the next we have the consent agenda. Number one is 26 
River Ave, a land lease. Two is Kids Run. Three is license for coin-operated amusements. Four, dance hall permit. Five, one-day entertainment licenses. Six, taxi business license. Seven, taxi operator's license. Eight, seafood festival vendor's license. Nine, <coughs> permit for use of town property license. I'll make a motion that we accept the consent agenda. I'll second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Four is approval of minutes. Number one is June 25th, public session. Does anyone have any I'll, comments? Uh, I'll so move, and I just had... No, not on that one. Second. We have a first and a second. All those in favor, unanimous. Number two is June 29, 2015. I'll so move. Second. All those in favor. Uh, oh, oh, I oh. Had, on page two, I think that it's way down at the bottom. Uh, it, referencing a gentleman named Doug DeSilver. I suspect it's D-E-S-I-L-V-A, not silver like the metal. So that, that should be... Uh, the name should be corrected. And on page four, um, about the middle, after that first paragraph with uh, Christy Pulliam, uh, says Selectman Woolsey, highways and streets, overtime wages should would be higher. I don't know. Paving line need to put in fee to keep line open. I'm not quite sure what that meant. I think it. I think what I said was we need to put at least some money on the paving line in public works to keep that line open. It was just that's just a little muddled. All those in favor, unanimous. Moving on to appointments. First, we have Charlie Gasparoni, Eagle Scout candidate. Please join us up at the table. Would you like to join them also? No, I'm good. <laughs> good evening, everybody. Good evening. I have some handouts for everybody. Charlie's becoming an old hand at this now. He, he made a presentation before the Conservation Commission, so he's got it down pat. Oh, nice. In there, you may need some water. Uh, sure. I have an extra Charlie if you need this. Okay. Um, I think I'm okay for now. You can come oh, on okay. good. Because you've been doing a lot of presentations. Mm, wow. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Charlie Gasparoni, and I'm an Eagle Scout candidate in Troop 177 in Hampton. Um, I'm planning to build an informational kiosk, kind of like a trail map, at White's Lane at the entrance to White's Lane near the mm -hmm. Newtown Forest. Um, that's off of Mill Road, and then I'm also uh, planning on reclaiming <coughs> Warren's Trail, which was a former Eagle Scout project off of Barber Road next to the Hampton Victory Garden, and it's been overgrown now, and we walked it, and it's completely, you can't get through at this point. It's completely overgrown. So I'm going to be, I'm planning on reclaiming that too, and uh, installing two You Are Here style signs at uh, the entrance to Jaunty's Lane off of Barber Road and uh, at Warren's Trail. And I've already gained the Conservation Commission's approval, and I was hoping for years. Um, and uh, the kiosk is going to be about 55 inches wide, 8 feet tall, and the roof is 62 inches wide and 30 inches deep. And it will meet all zoning requirements and building codes. Okay, questions uh, for Charlie. Mr. Wardell. Uh, excellent, excellent proposal. I'm fine with it, yeah. Mr. Bridal. Charlie, when, when do you want to start this and, and when do you hope to have it finished by? Um, so I'd like to, I still have more approvals to get to. I need my whole troop committee approval and I need my, uh, I need the Eagle Board's approval. I'm hoping to get that uh, within the next couple of weeks. 
and then I figure about uh, two to three weeks for fundraising, so I'd like to get it done uh, before the ground freezes, so uh, early fall, late summer, I'm hoping. That would be the best case scenario, so I would, I would assume late fall. How many man hours do you think it's going to take you to do this? Um, well, I'm hoping to get it done in about five work days, and then I'd like for the kiosk, we'll take about 10 people to construct, but I already have those people. Those are just volunteers for my troop. So I don't think it would take, I don't, I think it'll, yeah, take about five, eight hour work days with about uh, 10 people working on it. Excellent. Thank you. This is Wolf This Lake. is a great way to kick off our new, newly uh, voted for town forest. Um, you've done a great, great job. Very impressive, especially the fundraising part and then, of course, the physical labor. But uh, this is marvelous. And to see a young man uh, doing all this work and contributing to the, to the public is marvelous, Charlie. You've done a great job. Thank you. Mr. Bean. I have done. Keep up the good work and thank you, young man. Appreciate it. I'll move that we have. It looks, um, it's very attractive, yeah. and uh, I think it's going to be a major asset for the town. Will you Thank accept you. a motion to approve, yeah. Mr. Chairman? Second. All those in favor? Yes. Thank you again. Um, Thank you. For my approval, uh, I just need like a signed document with the town letterhead. That's yeah, all I need, and I don't okay. need that tonight, but. Okay, um, we'll get it we'll out get to it you. Okay. Okay. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Moving on, we have Chief Sawyer, Police Department. <coughs> and our assistant. Thanks. Hobbs. Oh. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. They don't look too tired from all the people that have been visiting. <laughs> well, they should be. Hire <laughs> <laughs> good people and they seem to take care of the problems for you. Um, so I'm going to go over uh, what I just gave you a copy is our, this is our second quarter report. <coughs> so this is from me as the chief to the board. And first is full-time staffing. Nothing's changed. We're still at 34 sworn full-time. On June 19th, we began our summer season. Officer Tim Hamlin, Officer Vitaly Sorokins were selected to serve as corporals. Corporal serves as direct supervisors for our part-time special officers during our busiest times at the beach. Uh, we currently have one officer, Bob Turcotte, out of service due to a duty related injury. It was a much covered incident where Bob was trying to affect a uh, arrest of detention of a su uh, suspect that uh, wound up dragging him with a car. Uh, he should be back shortly, although it was pretty... Uh, Pretty scary moment. Uh, the injuries were minor, and I'm hoping to have him back probably next week. Uh, Detective SRO Anthony Azarian completed the year at Hampton Academy as, as the SRO, but he will remain in the Criminal Investigative D Division, replacing one of our detectives who's been assigned to the DEA Portsmouth Tactical Diversion Task Force. I think we've discussed that quite a bit going off trying to uh, attack some of those drug issues affecting the region. Officer Matt Robinson was selected as Detective Zazarian's replacement at the Academy and will begin serving in the Academy in September. Our part-time staffing, uh, our current level on the roster is 33, uh, including the eight new part-time officers. Two part-time officers are currently on leaves of absence, bringing the number of working part-timers to 31, and we also have one of our new part-timers <coughs> that's been dealing with a health issue, so we're actually at 30 that are actually working the schedule. I believe it's 100 and 104 shifts we're working per week at this particular moment. Uh, Summer Part-Time Academy is also in session. This academy is being conducted regionally uh, through video conferencing with Hampton B PD being the Seacoast host. Hampton PD has seven candidates attending <clears throat> this current academy. Those folks uh, will get out before the school starts up in uh, late August and return to us next year. On June 30th, I was notified by the New Hampshire Police Stands and Training Council that the regional training through video conferencing will end by September 20th of this year. Classes will no longer be available in Hampton, and future classes will be held in Concord at the Police Academy. Mm. Additionally, some specialized classes that were previously free of charge uh, for attendance will now be fee-based. Examples of those include the field training officer, crash investigation, and interview and interrogation. So that means some of the the costs are being downshifted towards the local entity just because of the uh, budgetary restraints up at the academy. 
On to activity. Uh, these are compared to same periods last year. We are seeing some increases. Uh, our calls for service are up are about 8.5%. Our arrests are up 18%. Oh. EWI is up 72%. Oh Drug offenses are up 66%. Uh, incidents reported is down 5%. Total offenses are up 13%, felonies are up 14%. Motor vehicle stops are up by 4%. Parking tickets are down 15%. <laughs> Accidents down 11%. Again, this is just for this quarter mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> compared to uh, last year, April 1st to June 31st. Those are the comparables. Department operations to include the 4th of July weekend. Ongoing issues with heroin have plagued the region. Hampton had two overdose deaths attributed to heroin in the first quarter of 2015, and it had three more overdose deaths in the second quarter. That's a total of five. That's one more than we had all of last year. We continue to work with our local, state, and federal partners to combat this issue. Our preseason beach activity was limited to, uh, due to cool and wet weather experience in the region. Uh, the weekend of the 4th of July was challenging as the weather cleared, and large crowds came to the beach for the weekend. Even with our limited staffing, a reasonably quiet and safe holiday weekend was celebrated due to the many officers who came in for extra duty to provide for public safety that weekend. Uh, special thanks to the New Hampshire State Police, Rockingham County Sheriff's Department, and the University of New Hampshire Police Department, who all provided personnel and equipment to assist with a busy weekend. Assistance was also received from the town of Seabrook and the town of Exeter, who allowed uh, the use of their variable message boards. The Lawrence, Massachusetts Police Department donated the use of over 400 feet of crowd control fence, which assisted keeping pedestrians out of the busy traffic uh, over the holiday weekend. I'd like to thank each of these communities for their generosity, which greatly assisted the Hampton Police Department with a successful traffic control plan. With the 4th of July holiday behind us, we continue with our summer operation. This will include the continued training and acclimation of our new officers. With good weather, we anticipate large crowds of beachgoers and those attending assorted entertainment venues. The department also continues its operational planning for many special events scheduled for, uh, out to the fall to include Children's Week, Labor Day weekend, seafood festival, and a variety of running and bicycle events that are scheduled in this community. And that's how I have for report. I'll take any questions. Okay, questions. Mr. Bridal. Uh, no, I, I just, as I said earlier, I was down the beach on both Sundays, uh, the past two Sundays, and I know it's been very busy, and the guys did an excellent job. I saw all that fencing down there. Now that... Did the uh, Public Works pick that fencing yes, up? Yes, I, I should uh, highlight Public Works on uh, Thursday prior to the holiday came out uh, and took care of securing the, the fencing that we borrowed from Lawrence Mass in our fencing and uh, set that up for us, uh, which really helped us a lot because trying to maintain a, a patrol force and trying to set that up at the same <coughs> time just wouldn't have been possible. So Public Works really came through for us, and they also broke it down and took it back to Lawrence for us on uh, Monday after the holiday. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Mrs. Wellesley. Um, actually, uh, the chairman and I were at the HBAC meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago when the state was talking about redoing the master plan. Remember, they were talking about the sidewalk area and how dangerous it is and trying to make some accommodation. I don't know if the state will actually do it, but they were discussing it because it is dangerous down there. Um, I, I'm not quite sure what calendar you're using but June 31st oh I'm apologize. sorry about that that's okay <laughs> I, I couldn't resist um, did uh, um, was I forget is uh, mr. Goditis a lieutenant or Lieutenant Goditis, yeah okay did, did his plea for parking people have any results yes actually we uh, have the um, the supervisory position filled uh, with a gentleman from town, uh, Mr. Jim Mills. He has previously done the parking enforcement for us and has served as a volunteer within the department uh, dealing with some confidential matters and uh, records keeping. He's a very organized gentleman. He's a former postmaster. Good. So his organization, organizational skills are uh, really an asset to the department. Any other bodies? I mean, we have plenty of applications. We're now going through an interview process. Uh, the reason we were able to get Jim right to work is, again, he's already passed a security clearance with the department in the past. Right. So he's had access to those security areas. We have to do the same with any employee that comes through the doors. Yeah, because we're in the middle of July now. Any yep. idea on 
I'm hoping I can get something going by the end of next week. It just takes time to get them in on the interview, but we also have to have them scheduled for all the pre-employment uh, things that we now require. But once we have it in place for this year, then next year we can pretty much pick up right at the beginning of the season. And I have submitted my initial budget proposal uh, to finance, which does include line items for <clears throat> parking enforcement. Okay. Now, um, one more thought, because I am getting <coughs> about visibility of the department uptown. And we, I, I understand, and I know the public understands the tremendous pressures at the beach. Um, we've got uh, go karts uh, zooming three abreast up Mill Road. Problems with Four Corners, Mill, Mace, um, Anne's Lane. People not really, you know, one by one going through that intersection. And also, of course, the complaint from the San Bernard Road neighborhood. Now, I've been in and talked with one of the neighbors uh, with building inspection a couple of times. Um, I, uh, Mr. Warburton, uh, uh, and I went in to see the manager. There has been a petition submitted by that neighborhood because of the problems with a residence A in uh, being rented out. Uh, they do have a certificate of occupancy, but the neighborhood is really up in arms. I don't know if the petition has reached you, it has but not. there is serious problem in that neighborhood. And I'm getting um, concerned because I've been talking with and interceding for the neighborhood for about the past three weeks. And I'm wondering at what point in time we'll be able to get something done. We cannot allow the behavior that's going on. I, when I spoke with you, I was mentioning the air rifles that are being apparently discharged. And uh, I don't think a, a little grandmother should have to run out of her home and scoop up her grandchildren and bring them in the house in the middle of the day because of air rifles being shot. I think you told me when I spoke with you that it's not an illegal activity. Some of the, but some of the air rifles can have the power of a 22 caliber. They have the velocity, weapon. but again, as, I, as our discussion went, um, that in itself is not an illegal activity. So there's no police action that would be warranted. And as far as the other complaints, I might suggest I reviewed after I saw the string of emails uh, that the manager put out. Yeah. Nobody's contacted me. Okay, as the chief of police. And while I understand you want to advocate people as a member of the Board of Selectmen when it comes to those type of activities, yeah. the first call should be the police department. Well, we've talked, well, I did speak briefly with you, but the neighbors, okay. yeah, certainly they haven't. should be calling. They haven't. And, and to, uh, to, I just want to make sure we, that the record is reflected clearly. Yeah. I reviewed our calls for service since January 1 to yeah. the entire length of Sanborn Road, and I have three calls for service. Yeah. So while I understand the situation might be traumatizing to the residents, you need to pick up the phone and call us. And I, well, I, I had mentioned to them at the time of the activity is occurring to pick up the phone. Apparently, and call they you. didn't take your advice. Well, um, well, a lot of times people don't I take can't my advice. The problem is, ma'am, I can't respond to what I don't know what's okay. going on. Well, and, and I appreciate that. There's only that, one call for disturbance at the residence yeah. in question. That's been an ongoing problem. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Deputy Chief. Great job. Great force, great leadership, and uh, how's it going your first summer, both of you in the uh, command element now? I'm good. He's a little shaky. <laughs> <laughs> got it, got it. Uh, I don't hear any complaints, and uh, I bomb around this town on my bike, and I cruise for coffee, and my family does, and I'm on the west side, and I'm on the east side, and I'm down on the beach, and I see other selectmen down there sometimes with their grandkids. And I, I see your force, and I've observed them uh, in the performance of their duty. And I think it's an exceptional job. And carry on, and uh, have a good, safe summer. I appreciate it. On the complaint issue, I would just I would tell any citizen, if you have an issue, call down. I, I listened to a, a woman for 45 minutes the other day complain about bicycles on the state uh, sidewalk up on the North Shore area. And you know something? It, it, I could have pulled it <coughs> in, and it's not my problem. but. 
she wanted somebody to talk to about the problem, somebody that might help her with the state to try to get some signs up and deal with it. So that's what we do. You, you know, you pay us to listen to your problems and try to take care of them. If I don't know what the problems are, it's hard for me to address. So, again, anybody out in the public, if you have an issue with something you see or an issue of the conduct of the police, you need to call and let us know. And we, we will, we people, will act on it. We tell, I tell people all the time, that is the most important thing. People don't like yep. to complain. And they're not going to get any results unless they do. Well, we always get that. We always get the comments, you know, hey, I don't want to bother you. Yeah. That's yeah. what you pay your taxes for. Yeah. Um, Every department here in town, they welcome their complaints and their comments. And unless people do complain, nothing can be done. Mr. Waddell. Yeah, uh, thank you. Good report. Thanks for everything you guys do. Staffing. When you say you have 35 full and 33 part-time, what's optimal staffing? What would that 34 be? is what it's been for... Since the mid 80s, has been the, the full time staff, including the command staff chief. Uh, the part time staff, we are permitted to have up to 70. Now, very rarely have we ever hit that number. I, I recall back in 2005 when I became captain and took over the scheduling, I was, I was handling about 55 to 60, was the, the biggest number I've seen. And we were working over 200 shifts per week. Shift today. 30, working just over 100, that's a significant reduction. And based on the attrition rates we've seen historically over the last several years, we'll probably down, be down in the 25 area before the end of the summer, simply because many of our, we've already lost several officers this spring to other departments. We just lost uh, Officer Slocum to Manchester PD. Uh, we have another officer uh, waiting for the word to be hired by Plastow PD, and those are just the things we cut we uh, encounter. If it gives you a perspective, in 2014 we hired eight officers. We're now down to three of those officers being left with the department. We'll lose another one before the summer's over. We'll be down to two. Okay. If you go to the class of 2012, we have one officer left <coughs> out of a dozen that we hired. He's getting ready to go to a department down in Massachusetts. Great. The next junior person on our roster is from the class of 2003. We have nobody left 2004 up to 2011. God. Um, just it's the nature of what we're dealing with recruitment and police departments is very tough right now the city of Manchester is hiring 20 officers this year Nashua will be hiring state police if the state budget ever gets uh, settled they'll be hiring because they're short about 30 troopers um, and, and they look at us as putting out a quality product um, <laughs> I guess it's the the, the, the backswing to a, to a great training program and we really vet our people but I'm not willing to lower our standards either to, to, for the purpose of retaining them. Um, summer or two, and, and they move on, unless they wind up staying with us for some reason if we have an opening. So it's a constant battle. Right. And, it, and in, in a case like that, I mean, there's no way you can compete. It's hard because as people have suggested in many agencies they have contracts. But those are contracts for, you know, apples to apples, oranges to oranges. So. When they come to Hampton, they're part-time. When they go to Manchester, they're not taking their part-time certification. They will have to attend the New Hampshire Police Academy, the full one. So to hold them back on a contract based on their part-time qualification isn't going to fly because they're not using that to go to the next job. They're going to have to be, become qualified. What the other departments gain by what they get from a Hampton officer is they know we put every part-time officer through the same uh, rigorous hiring process that we put a full-timer through. And... It's a money. It's a money game. It costs money to recruit. It costs money to put people through these processes, and nothing's worse than you get to the very end, you're ready to swear them in, and something pops up, and they wash out, and you've wasted all that money. Nashua, Manchester, very professional police departments look at us as a professional feeding ground because they don't have to really have much of a worry in those areas because we've already vetted these people. So they continue to uh, they come after us because recruitment nationally is is a is a very difficult proposition. Hmm. Interesting. A couple more questions. The video training conferencing ending, that's, I mean, is that because they don't feel it's, it's doing the job or it's a money issue? It's a money issue. Money issue. Um, the police academy is funded by the penalty assessment fund. So if we write, a, if tickets are written for speeding, whatever the offense may be, there's a penalty assessment, and that's primarily how the police academy is funded. Yeah. Because there's such a reduction in the number of officers working in the state and the hours they're working because of budgetary constraints, those numbers have dramatically dipped. So the funding of the police academy is becoming in jeopardy. That's why they're having to resort to things like, even though we give a, they were paying a fee to use, uh, I think it was Great Bay Community College, 
they were paying a fee. They couldn't afford that, so they asked us, and we, we gave them the room for free to use because it was a benefit to the town to have our uh, future employees working out of our building. Um, but that also costs money. That, that fee to simulcast that, um, it's expensive. And when they started cutting things, they had to go to things that they didn't feel were essential. So now when we start the process again in September, we start a police part-time academy, say the end of January, February, they'll have to commute to Concord up to the police academy. That'll be the only place the training is being offered. It will not be uh, televised out. Mm. So it's unfortunate. It was, a, it was a great savings to the communities and the people going. And it's unfortunately, in my opinion, is going to put an additional burden on recruitment because trying to hire local people if we can. And it was just easy. They could drive to Hampton PD, take the classes there on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now they're going to have to commute up to Concord. So it's going to be a, a greater burden upon the individuals looking to become police officers. Wow. A couple other questions. Sure. DWI is being up 72%. Yeah. Uh, drug offense is up 66 percent. I mean, does that does that do you guys think that's a real problem? I mean, it's up. The percentage seems to be up pretty substantially. Yeah, it's, well, let's we'll take let's we'll take them uh, separately. The DWI issue is, I think, really a reflection of some of the issues we're facing down at Hampton Beach. While we've, I think we've enjoyed a renaissance and improvement in the quality of the venues down there and and the behavior. The overserving of alcohol uh, in Hampton is a legitimate problem. I've had a number of discussions with the Director of Liquor Enforcement, uh, Jim Wilson, uh, and his staff to the point that we have invited them to utilize an office in our building with one of their folks that covers this area just so there's a higher visibility from liquor enforcement. We're trying to attack this uh, in a number of ways. Our officers have been directed that when they come across anybody that's intoxicated, be it for an arrest or uh, just a protective custody situation that try to ascertain where this person was drinking so we can deal with that issue. Uh, we have had issues in establishments due to over-serving where we've encountered some violence issues where I've ordered in police details under, under my authority's chief of police to try to quell those problems. It all comes back to the major issue of over-serving of alcohol. Um, <clears throat> we have become a, a great destination for people to come and have fun. But as we know, when people are having fun, sometimes they go a little overboard, and somebody has to be responsible to stop that activity. Um, I've seen some improvements. I, I've had a number of discussions with, with some of the licensees in the area. I let them know we're taking it serious. And as much as we want to support our business community, not to the point where it becomes unsafe. Um, and I think most of them are being very responsive in that area. It's hard. Somebody walks in your door. And in today's society where people have access to other items such as pills um, and people have been you, you using those things, trying to control that the best we can in a cooperative way is what I want to try to achieve. But sometimes we do have to resort to the enforcement. Uh, again, liquor enforcement is our primary tool. Yeah, they come in, review the reports, and they go down and, and take administrative actions on them. So, and the drugs? The drug offenses, I, I think it's a couple of things. Um, and again, it's, I think we're seeing the issue with the heroin. We're already at more overdose deaths this year than we experienced all of last year, and it's only July. The prevalence, I think the societally, there's, there's unfortunately, I think, an acceptance. Uh, we encounter folks all the time from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that when we catch them with marijuana, can't believe they're getting arrested because it's legal. No, it's not legal. It's not legal in the Commonwealth. It's being de decriminalized. And what that means is, is in the state of Massachusetts, they put it on a par with a minor vehicle offense. You get a summons for it. You don't get arrested for it. Now, the state of New Hampshire, uh, I know it's been a topic of discussion uh, at the general court. But at this point, the laws have not changed in the state of New Hampshire. It is still a criminal act to possess marijuana. It's still a misdemeanor offense. Yeah. And I think that's part of it. I think it's a lack of education. Um, I think it corresponds to, if you look at our arrests, most of our arrests come from out of state, people visiting the beach. Mm. And they come with their preconceived conceptions of what's right and wrong. And I think they just are a little shocked on many occasions that it's, it's an illegal substance in the state of New Hampshire and you will be arrested for it. You don't get a summons for it. You get physically arrested and taken into custody. Mm. So I would attribute those two things to the, uh, the drug offenses. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a very informative report. Could I ask the chief yeah. one more quick question? On the over-serving chief, I, if, 
if I recall, if uh, an establishment deliberately serves someone who shouldn't be having any more, mm -hmm. and that person goes out and gets in an accident or causes some kind of problems, can't they lose their license, the liquor license and maybe even be sued? Or Absolutely. They, they, they incur a great degree of, a degree of civil liability for those over-serving issues and a degree of criminal liability. Yeah. If it can be, you have to prove it, though, and that's the difficulty of it. Just because somebody was in an establishment, now you have to go back and prove that how much alcohol did they consume in that establishment. And it's a difficult thing. Um, but by having the liquor enforcement folks here on the ground as opposed yeah. to us giving it to them after That's the a good fact, idea. Yep. I think we'll instill a little bit more respect for the process. And uh, one of the things we're going to do, and I don't mind putting it out publicly because I want our licensees to know, we have done what quote unquote sting operations where we send an underage person in. Uh, to try to attempt to purchase alcohol in our licensed establishments. Mm -hmm. That will occur this summer. So everybody that's watching, spread the word to your license, your friends that are, are bartenders <laughs> and all that. We are coming down to <coughs> liquor enforcement and we will be sending decoys Good. in to see if you're going to, you know, it's a, it's a truth test Good. to see if you're doing your job. Uh, it's, it's an important thing and yeah. uh, Nobody can say they weren't warned because I'm making it a statement in a public meeting that we will be doing this. Use one of those electronic signs. Man, we did it Friday night. We had we had a sobriety checkpoint, and we still arrested a dozen people with a big sign flashing sobriety checkpoint ahead. Um, we did it. We did it in conjunction with the New Hampshire State Police, Seabrook uh, PD, County Sheriff's, and us right over the line on 1A into oh Seabrook. My God. They advertise it in the newspapers a few days before. We don't try to hide where we're doing it. We try to let people know we're doing it so maybe they make better decisions and we still arrested a dozen people. So alcohol sometimes makes us make bad choices and that's why we're out there to make sure people don't get into too deep, uh, wow. deep in the woods with it. Mm -hmm. Did we do this um, donation? Oh, yes. Nope, that was the next thing. I'm going to have the deputy handle that portion. Okay. If that's okay. We'll move on to that. Uh, the crime line for the Hamptons is looking to donate $1,000 to the police department uh, for the purpose of purchasing controlled drugs in our confidential buy, uh, confidential drug buy program that we, our CID, uh, Criminal Investigations Division, utilizes. This will help us take a bigger step towards those drug investigations where we can go out and purchase drugs and build our cases um, to help address the problem here in town a little bit better so it would be a, a <clears throat> upon your approval it would it would be a good asset for us to be able to utilize the money for that yeah they do seem to do a lot of good and been around for a long time our good friend corin green mm -hmm. works hard with that yeah. does someone want to make that motion i'll make that motion I'll I'll second it. It. Good. all those in favor unanimous thank you. thank you and uh thank you for all that you've been doing Keep thank you for the time keeping us safe <laughs> thank you good night gentlemen thank you. Uh, Phil, do you have to go through the uh, sobriety checkpoint on your bike? Am I under oath? Town manager's report, Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, remember not to ride my bicycle if I have anything to drink. Uh, the Energy Committee has indicated on a report uh, sent to me that based upon actual billings, from our third party supplier for electrical energy. The town has over the last 33 months saved $134,748 over our previous billing rates. Uh, analysis of the approved bids for solid waste disposal indicates that the projected savings over our previous solid waste contract is $236,681. That's for the five year period. That calculation does not take into consideration any unknown increase or decrease in total tonnage channeled or the CPI adjustments that are contained within the contracts and at course until they become known are currently unknowns. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there's a couple of other things that I think folks should know. <clears throat> We're going to sometime uh, midweek or a little later be mailing out a letter to over 4,000 residents uh, who own property in the town. Uh, that letter is concerning the new federal flood control areas that are uh, put out by FEMA. Uh, they'll also be with that, and I have a copy here for the press so that they can have it. Hopefully they'll print it. Um, with the, the, we, there are also directions that are contained with this 
Uh, it shows you how to uh, access the Federal Flood Control Data Bank. And you can, once you're in there, you can type in your address and it will bring your property up and tell you where you are in the flood control district and uh, what, what particular section of the district you're in. So that would help you when you have to call your insurance agent to find out what's really going on with federal flood control. So those will be out sometime this week. And <coughs> say there are over 4,000 of them, so we're going to take a little time to get those out. I had a conversation today with... Um, the uh, it was state dread, um, and they were kind enough to send me a, a map. Uh, the state fish and wildlife service and the federal fishing game people uh, have banned any cleaning of Hampton Beach from um, Haverhill Avenue to the river because of the piping plovers. Yes, so that yes. that section of the, of the beach, which is probably close to a third of the total beach, mm -hmm. will not be cleaned any time before probably the first week of August. Mm -hmm. And maybe later than that, depending on how long it takes to fledge the uh, individual piping plovers and get them off the ground and out of harm's way. So for all intents and purposes, those areas of the beach will continue to remain unclean, I think is the proper terminology. Mm. Uh, and um, just so we... We have this report on the record. Uh, we have started some paving action. Um, they have been, uh, our, our paving company, uh, GMI, has been working to uh, uh, strip the uh, old pavement off of uh, and grind down the tops of uh, Belmont, Fairfield, and Ruth uh, and to raise the structures in preparation for new paving. Uh, they'll be putting on a base course of paving followed by a complete top coat of paving shortly. It should all be done in one operation, uh, and that will be the tomorrow or Wednesday. Good. <clears throat> Once they've completed that, uh, the paver will be moving over to Exeter Road, uh, where we're going to grind the street, we're going to do adjustments to manholes if necessary, and that will be followed by a base course of paving, followed by a finished course of paving. We anticipate that will probably take from two to four days. So within, I would say, probably a week to 10 days, uh, all of those streets will be finished and completely paved. Wow. So we keep our fingers crossed, no rain, so we can get in and get out. The police department uh, has a traffic control plan. Uh, signs will be going, electronic signs will be going up tomorrow at both ends, uh, including on, on 101. Uh, so people will have an idea of exactly how to go and what directions to take. So that's it, sir. Questions from the town manager, Mr. Waddell? Yes, uh, just a question. Probably make me very unpopular in my neighborhood. Uh-oh. Uh, in my Fourth of July, right? There are two groups that put on private fireworks displays ah. mm -hmm. that are really good fireworks displays, and everybody loves them. But we do have an ordinance against mm. fireworks. So I'm just wondering if we're leaving ourselves wide open if something were to happen. You know, I mean, there's one on North Beach and one in Place Cove, mm -hmm. and they're, <laughs> they're phenomenal, the, the things, and everybody loves them. But I'm just... Mm. My understanding is that they're, uh, they're Class A fireworks, four-inch probably and so on. Uh, those people should have permits. It's not against the law for a licensed person to put on a fireworks display provided they get a license. Okay. Do we know if those... I don't know that they are licensed. I haven't seen any license, nor have I heard the state of issuing a license. It requires approval from the state of New Hampshire. It requires approval from the fire and police departments, and it requires approval from the selectmen. Yeah. Uh, and that's outside the precinct, so it doesn't require precinct approval. Mm. However, if you don't, and you get caught, and I have to admit we don't have enough personnel with all the people at the beach when the fireworks are going off there, uh, to in fact send people up there to stop the fireworks. Uh, should that change, then I suspect that there will be a problem. Mm -hmm. I don't know how big a problem that's going to be, but uh, my understanding is that it's a criminal offense, and I would suggest that people are probably going to get arrested if they don't have a permit. So my suggestion is come get a permit from the state and the town and the fire department. Mr. Seems Ryan. fairly simple. And anything under a Class A 
is not allowed in town, correct? Uh, all fireworks, there are no fireworks allowed in town, mm -hmm. period, unless right. they are issued under a state permit with the approval of fire marshal of the state of New Hampshire, mm -hmm. the select <coughs> of the fire department. Yeah. So there are no fireworks allowed at all. Yeah. And, you know, we, we see people shooting them off all the time. We hear them. Uh, yeah. um, but the real problem is when one gets away and lands on a rooftop and burns the building down, and that has happened recently uh, in the last few years in a couple of towns in New Hampshire, mm -hmm. uh, that person is completely liable for all of that yeah. and any injury caused to any person. So... Um, it's always best to take the precaution to get the permit, to take the action that the fire department recommends, mm -hmm. the state fire marshal recommends. And if they do it right, everybody will be safe. Getting back to the paving a little bit, I know we also had in part of that list uh, the loop at Tuck Field, the driveway loop. That's supposed to be part of it. The driveway loop, um, I believe it's Toll Farm Road. There is something to tell you. And, and there may be a couple of other streets. It depends on how much le is left over after we finish these other well, I know operations. The, the, the loop was on part of a It's in the park and rec budget. Yeah. Right. That, that will be done before fall. Right. Um, but we have other We don't want to be there in the middle of summer simply right. because we've got lots and lots and lots and lots of kids there. Um, <clears throat> they'll do that as, as time allows, but we do have a couple of other projects that will be done later in the, in the, year, in the fall. Okay. Um, I guess that's it. This is Wolf Lake. Okay. Um, the state is supposedly having the um, sea, the seawall jetty rebuilt, so they're going to have their equipment parked down right near it. Is that taking place yet, do you know? Because that's south of where just... I mean, I guess they're going to be right up against the <coughs> city, so they're not interfering with the plovers unless the state's making them wait. Well, the information I got is that there is no access okay. at all. So they must not be working on the jetty yet. I w I, unless they've got permission from Federal Fishing Game. They said they were going to work. When they came into conservation, they said they were going to work from a, like a barge or something. You know, as long as they're not side. on shore. And then they would just have like one or two trucks right on the sand. I'm not sure. My information well, is that there are no vehicles allowed in that oh, entire okay. area. Well, it's the state's so, problem, but I guess is. they're supposed to redo that jetty. Um, thank you. On the flood letters, do the precinct commissioners know yet that they're going out? No, not yet, but they will. Gonna, you're going to have happy commissioners down there. Um, mailboxes. You and I had a very brief conversation because I have been made aware of a complaint that was made to you about the box that got wiped out by the plow over the winter. Uh, and I asked if we could maybe set up a, a, a little discussion on one of our agendas as to how we actually handle mailbox damage. Would, would anyone have an objection to doing that? I think it's something we probably should talk out. I, I saw the letter that was out there, mm -hmm. uh, and I and I saw the response from from Public Works. Yeah. Um, I think uh, in part of that, one of their solutions was to move the base to the other side, where it'd be less apt to get <coughs> done. Drill the piece that's there and pin it. I think that's a a reasonable solution. Um, but when people put stuff in the town's right of way. And it's there. They have to have some responsibility, also. Well, that's why I'm wondering whether we should be involved in bothering with compensation or anything for mailbox damage. <clears throat> you, the federal government allows you to put so the mail a letter carrier can pull up and put the mail in your box. So you're allowed to put it on the public way, but. You know, all of us own, I guess. I mean, we own our mailbox. I stuff. think I think what the public works has is if, uh, and they've done in the past, if one is damaged, they have set up a fee for a wooden post in a, in a mailbox to replace what's there. I know you can spend thousands of dollars in buying an ornamental mailbox. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but if it's in the right of way and it's it happens to get damaged while 
while they're plowing snow, I'm sorry, but that's something that you chose to put out there over and above and beyond what yeah. the need is. Yeah, we um, have not had a problem in all the years I've been here, 11 years on the Board of Selectmen. We have never had a problem with mailboxes. So why have one now? Fred indicated, well, I mean, we did have the complaint from these, <coughs> these individuals. And it's, it's a little bit different from just hitting a regular mailbox. Well, I think but it's I was a wondering that it needs to stay at the public works. Fred, well, I'm wondering why we're doing it at all. We're, public works is legitimately plowing the roads. And if there's something in the way and it happens to get hit, you know, it, it seems to me that we'd be better off maybe not doing it at all. And then if, you know, that it's just one of the casualties. Fred mentioned something about there are quite a few claims, I guess, uh, every year, especially in a year like we just had. And I don't know whether that's something we should even bother public works with. I've just, if you want to think about it, and then we can maybe put it on, on the agenda for a brief discussion. I don't want to... I myself feel that we should just leave it the way it is. No. It's worked fine for years and haven't heard any complaints. No. no. Does anyone else have any uh, consensus one way or the other? Okay. Well, I just thought I'd bring it up because I was talking with the... Uh, uh, Mr. Bean. Late. I'm not done yet. Um, oversight of the... Uh, I had a question from a resident on the oversight of the uh, uh, Energy <coughs> Committee, and Fred did mention the uh, savings in the energy rates for the last 33 months. Um, still waiting for the, for the outline for Selectman-sponsored committees so that we can have them in here and, and have uh, everybody on the same page as far as <coughs> taking minutes and posting minutes and posting meetings and whatever the heck we expect them to do. Do we have an idea, Fred, when we might be able to do that? Uh, Years no, half it's, over. It's, it's, it's on our agenda, but uh, we've been stacked up with so much work that oh, we just I know. haven't gotten to it. I know. <clears throat> but that's something that we will address with the Energy Commission Committee, just like all the other committees once we have... Everybody will be addressed together. I guess what we'll have yeah. is a mass meeting. Okay. Um, is the new deputy about to be named yet in Public Works? We're close. Close? Okay. Because you said once we have the new deputy, we can look forward to improved ventilation in the wastewater treatment plant? Well, we're getting there. I'm hopeful. Okay. Um, let's see what else we have here. Oh. The fire station plaques, and I thank you for the chief's uh, memo on that. Are we ready to order? Are you going to ask us? That it's not on today's agenda. Are you going to bring this up later, or do you want? I, I gave it to you for your advice. Uh, we were ordered to prepare it by this board. Right. Money was encumbered to, to, uh, yep. to put the plaques up. Uh, I gave it to you so that you'd have time to, uh, yep. to review it, and I don't know if everybody has, and it would normally go on the next agenda. You want it on next week's Unless agenda? you want to do something oh, with it this week, that's fine. I mean, with I'm me. prepared to to make my recommendation, but otherwise we'd have another two weeks to till our next meeting. Up to you, but I'm all set with. I'm prepared to scrap the plaques, and no. save the money that we we're no. spending on plaques, and use them towards something else. No, I think they should have. They should always have. Well, a let's talk about plaque. it in two weeks. All right, on the agenda for in two weeks. I'll save that. Anything um, else? Yes, fire inspection fees. Um, <clears throat> I had a question from a resident on the fire inspection fees because we authorized the increase in <coughs> February. And uh, I'm going to ask if we can perhaps ask the chief AR if at the end of August he can give us a quick recap of what we have brought in in fire inspection fees in that six month period to give us a little idea uh, whether we are uh, bringing in better revenue with the increased fees. And they certainly have been keeping on top of the inspections because when we start talking about our budget, I'm sure we're going to be talking about fire inspector or fire prevention or both or however. And I think we, I would like to get an idea um, if the fees are going to look like something moderately sufficient to help <coughs> offset the uh, the expense. Um, oh, and Fred, your letter. 
an excellent letter to the DOT dated July 7th. What is it going to take for us to get through to the state of New Hampshire that we do not own the sidewalks on the west side of 1A? What do we need to do? Should we send you up with ammunition to <laughs> to DOT? Or what, what are we going to do with these guys? We had an arrangement with the Department of Transportation. They've appointed a new regional or a new district engineer, and the district engineer simply scrapped it. There are no laws governing this. There are no policies. There are no, well, there is a policy of the state, but there is no administrative regulation. They can't make one, because if they make one, the law says even if they force us to do it, to do the work, they have to pay for it. Because there's a constitutional amendment says you can't do that. The point is that we made an agreement with them, and they issued a number of permits, yeah. and those permits entitled these people who are redeveloping these properties yes. along the state highway yes. to redo the sidewalk at their expense so the town the state has no expense and they maintain it in perpetuity mm. and, and so do their successors in title and the state has now turned around and scrapped that entire process saying the town has to do it and the town also has to clear and maintain all the sidewalks at its expense all winter oh. that's a five hundred thousand dollar expense is the estimate because we have to truck all that snow away. And, you know, my recommendation of the board is don't volunteer for something you don't want to pay for. Right. So, um, and right now that's the position of the town, and unless you change it, of course. Um, and I'm trying to get the process redone so that we can move forward and the, we can get things finished and make the town even looking better. Well, there's a whole lot to think about here because there's a lot more uh, condos that are coming online. Yep. They're going to be needing to have more uh, snow removal than what has been removed yep. in yep. the past. Yep. And they're paying taxes and they don't want to be, they're not gonna want to be uh, treated like second class citizens year round. I can guarantee it. There's 80 new condos that are coming on that aren't even there today uh, that will be coming on by next summer. The Ashworth is very upset about their um, um, uh, sidewalks in front of the Ashworth. They've taken it. They, last year they had it all sided and made nice at their own expense. And I was given a tour by the manager of the Ashworth, and it's all ripped out and damaged, I guess probably by the state, because they must plow there, or is it the town also? It's Maybe the state. We don't touch it. You don't? Do, what's <coughs> the name of that road next to the Ashworth? Highland Ave? Highland Ave. Oh, and Nut Ave. No, the other one. Nut, Nut Ave. Ave. Nut. There's some damage on the Nut Ave side, yeah. too, and I bet that's town. <clears throat> and um, so there's a lot of problems here. So this is going to have to be discussed at some point. Um, the Ashworth, uh, you know, the manager of the Ashworth uh, feels that something needs to be done here, and he's uh, not happy about it. Um, so there's one place, and I'm sure there are many others. Uh, <clears throat> What about how Mrs. Mitchell wraps into that other condo? What's happening there? I mean, I remember when the state, that was done, the state said they were going to come back and do something there. Uh, or that, was there were, the, that was one of the sidewalks the state agreed with the developer to allow them to do something to fix that sidewalk because the state would not. Yeah. So the sidewalks that's there is the result of the state's activity with the developer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember, because I was here, and there was something else going on. The state uh, left it kind of in an unsettled position, as I remember it on the planning board. That's correct. They did. They said that they wanted the town to tear out all the sidewalks and redo them in concrete mm -hmm. and maintain them in perpetuity at the town's expense. Yeah, right. Just like they told us that every crosswalk on, on Route 1A was to receive a set of traffic control lights for pedestrian crossing, which the town would purchase, install, and maintain in perpetuity. Hmm. Um, there's a state law that says they can't do any of that. Mm -hmm. And the state's ignoring their own law in order to tell the town, you need to do this. The reason for all that, and they stated it in the letter, was because the town has uh, created an attractive nuisance called the beach. Mm -hmm. And that's the town's fault, not the state's. And as I pointed out to them, the state built it, the state purchased it, the state's maintained it, and they can't seem to get the idea that they might be actually responsible for it. 
So they're trying to shift that expense over to the taxpayers of Hampton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're uh, trying to do what they do over the whole uh, of rest the state. of the state. Right. Mm -hmm. they, they have a policy for the whole state, and Hampton doesn't, uh, what's happening in Hampton doesn't fit into the policy that the rest of the state does. So at some point, something's going to have to be uh, taken care of here because it's not fair to the people that live there. Well, in many ways, including the whole road, the drainage system, everything else. The state, so, the state has neglected all of that. I agree. I know. So what's going to happen? Where are we, where are we going to go with the, this? The problem is, it is a state road until a state takes the time to, yeah. to fix and repair that. We can't work at it, so there's not much we can do on a state road. We've actually offered to work with them, and the answer was no. It's your responsibility to do everything. <clears throat> at one point, they even changed the position of the fog lines running down the edge of the roadway to move them from the curb <laughs> out beyond the drainage and said the town is now responsible for all the drainage because we only maintained the fog line. Um, they bought this. Yeah. And they bought it from the town. Yeah. And my admonition to the commissioner was, if you really don't want it, give it back to us. Of course, we want the parking along with it, uh, and we'll take the beach back too. But they don't want to do that. They just want us to maintain everything. And I can do that. If the board directs me or the town directs me yeah. to do that, it's only going to cost you money. It is not on the back. So I, the I, it's it's, it's <clears throat> not a way to solve the problem. I agree. No. And we've tried to work with them. The problem is that they refuse to work with us. So. Well, I saw your letter too, Fred, and... Uh, my, my take was a little different on it. I, I, uh, I think it was a good letter. I think they have a new person in that office now. He might not have known what the previous hmm. arrangement was, right. and I think you, you spelled it out very clearly for him. Yeah. And so we haven't heard back from him since then, have we? Not yet. No. So I, I'm, I'm curious to wait to hear. I w I'd rather wait till we hear back from him because he may find out that, well, yes, in fact, we did have this, and it's worked in the past, and if we can continue to do that. I think uh, I think your letter was very good that way. Thank you. He's, he, he, I know he's got to run it up the chain of command, and he's got to run back down the chain of command. And I think when that all happens and it all washes out, the state won't have any expense, the town won't have any expense, and they'll be happy, and we'll get things moving again, and eventually we'll get the whole sidewalk replaced. Oh, it was a good <coughs> letter. I have yeah, because it's such a mishmash. I mean, I we're going to depend upon these people that come in assorted condos to have a decent, decent sidewalk, and all the rest of the sidewalks are going to be horrible. Well, it's like you're leaving you hanging with drainage, mm, right? I know, and well, it's been hanging for years, and yeah. I'm just kind of sick of nothing happening about that yeah. and Good. other issues that are, I think it's really getting to be a crisis. Yeah, I agree with, with Rick and Rusty. And I think it's a, it's a situation that needs to be resolved mm -hmm. in some way. It can't I mean, be, push, be pushed. Right, I've and it can't it be, people like can't be living with... The last yeah, 10 years. Yeah, we, it needs to be resolved, so we need to keep our, on top of this and make sure that we're, mm -hmm. you know, figuring out what's happening and, and hopefully resolve it with the state and the, the developers and everything. I yeah. have two more quick things okay. on my list. The um, bus for the rec department. Yep. It's not on the agenda. When are we going to take a motion it on is that? It's on the agenda. It yeah, is? Okay. Okay. It's a consent item. Next okay. thing. New, okay. new business. You, new nothing business. else, Mr. Yes. B? Wait a minute. Where? Well, it's on the agenda. Would you like to finish with your, what a you have to say? bid waiver for number one. Oh, okay, the passenger bus. Thank you. Anything and this else? is the last thing in the town and city, Fred. It's talking about this, um, here it is, the CPACE financing energy efficiency. In the town, and it's talking about they're trying to get um, <coughs> a developing template language for town meeting towns to adopt in March 2016, with the hope that by 2017 any municipality that wishes to adopt the program can. Um, this is really <coughs> totally new to me. I'm sure it's totally new to most of the board. And this is the Are town we have any kind report of report that we're talking about. Well, I'm talking about something potentially well, coming up, up on the warrant new business next year. Or old business. Well, well, I'm just asking the manager if that's something that he thinks we might be consulting on when we're looking at getting the warrant together. It is something we're going to look at. That's it. Okay, thank Mr. You. Bean. Questions for the town manager's report? I have none. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you for your report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank Moving you, members. Moving on to new old business, revenue sharing. Thank you. I put, asked this to be put on, and, and uh, you, you just spoke, the whole board spoke about um, the lack of cooperation and the downshifting of costs by the state of New Hampshire. And uh, it, it's been a, uh, 
a call from this board, at least during my tenure, and uh, it's been studied. Uh, we've developed the metrics with department heads and Mr. Welch. It's seven figures a year that uh, is required of our operational costs and our depreciation. We want to keep it on the front burner. It goes perfectly in line with what you're talking about, Exeter Road. They dissolve or absolve themselves of ownership. It's suddenly our problem, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, New Hampshire is uh, in the bottom 10% of return of revenue of taxes to the state from the federal government. The state of New Hampshire with its revenue camps, uh, with the business profits tax, business entertainment tax, or business uh, excise tax, rooms and meals, liquor, tolls, and uh, the beach enterprises, uh, is taking between $150 million and $200 million a year from within this town. We just heard the chief of police talk about how operationally challenged he is. Uh, that seven figures goes a long way towards bonding infrastructure projects. That seven figures a year that we assume as taxpayers uh, goes a long way towards alleviating and uh, destroying our capital uh, improvements challenges, and it could evaporate those. Uh, victory has a thousand fathers, and defeat is an orphan, and uh, quite frankly, um, I'm happy to accept responsibility for this these last three years, but I, I would uh, I would ask that the legislators uh, in New Hampshire that represent us come in again, and we actually um, put some meat on the bones on this issue, and uh, start getting uh, the ball rolling. We've uh, been toasted by the next terror company, that's uh, a five billion dollar corporation. Um, and we get no help from uh, the Dread Commissioner when we have issues. We're sandbagged on that. That was the fifth, that's a $15 billion corporation. Uh, the Dread Commissioner is the former spokesperson for that. I don't think he has a feel for the small New Hampshire business. I don't think he has a feel for the small New Hampshire towns. And so I would like, if the board would uh, find it uh, agreeable again, to have the legislative delegation back in I, here again. I agree. I think it's a good, that's exactly where we should go. When can that happen, Mr. Welch? When would you like to happen, Mr. Chairman? As soon as possible. All right, it'll happen okay. as soon as possible. Any other comments? Um, I have other old business that um, some gentleman came in today, and it does have to do with something we've already dealt with. Um, I can't think of his name right now. I don't know why, but the guy that owns the motel that's next to the um, police station, Jeff, is it? Jeff uh, next to the yeah, fire Jamier. station. Yeah, isn't it Jeff? Yep. Yeah. Oh, the fence. Jeff. What? The fence. Yeah, the fence. Yep. Okay, nothing's happened there, and it's uh, disturbing his clients. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, I was waiting for counsel to return because you indicated you wanted an agreement signed. When we yeah. did this, uh, yeah. that, that we will do this, and that will be the end of it. We'll mutually agree that this is mm -hmm. the best we can do. And he's just returned from vacation, so that should be done by tomorrow. Okay, because he wants it done. Yeah, so maybe no, so, so do we. Can drop it off down there yep. so he can yeah. sign it right, right. away. Um, any other old business? Moving on to new business. The number one bid waiver purchasing policy. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, uh, we did bid out the um, the bus, I'll say the bus, uh, a 14-passenger bus which <coughs> did not need a CDL to, to operate. Uh, we had three bidders, and the low bidder was 51996, the next bidder was uh, 529, and the next bidder was 57499. These are all under the $60,000 that was in the appropriation. Uh, the Park and Recreation Department has examined all of these buses. Uh, the one that comes closest to uh, our needs is the high bidder, the 57499. It comes closest to our needs simply because of the way the bus is built, the way that the bus is put together. Uh, we currently have the same bus, which has lasted us 12 years, which is a lot, considering the fact that we use it all the time. Park and Recreation would like to ask the board for a bid waiver to purchase the bus for $57,499. And um, that's the bus, incidentally, that uh, of the three bidders, there's only one that has 14 seats, and this is the one. Also move that we accept the, oh, how do you want to phrase it, Fred, that we accept the... Um, the bid for $57,499. Okay, which is well below the authorized it's amount. It's below the appropriation request. The appropriation. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor, 
unanimous. But we're not, we, 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 sir. We're, we're sure we're on the bid, the proper bid process, and that we can do this. That they can go, even though it's not the low you bid. Can because it's the one that best suits our needs. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as long as we're sure on that, yeah. <clears throat> Release of welfare lien. Mr. That's Chairman, right. this is this is standard. Uh, we have a welfare lien that has been paid. We need to release the lien so the property can be unencumbered. Is there a motion? Also move. Second. Oh. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next, the section 805-45, period B, speed limits established vehicles and traffic, Article 7, speed limits. A, Winnicunit Road. Easterly from Jaffrey Drive to Lock Road and 25 miles an hour westerly from Lock Road to Jaffrey Drive. Mr. Chairman, this, this really involves the intersection of Landing Road and Winnicunit Road and the two feeders coming down Winnicunit Road into Landing Road. Yeah. Um, we're having more and more complaints about people who are driving much too fast in there. Um, I <coughs> saw two today myself while I was out in town. Uh, just come right through, come, coming west uh, Winnicunit Road, and didn't bother to stop at the south side, went right between two cars right. going down Landing Road. Yeah. Um, this may not stop all this foolish activity, but at least we can put signs up, intersection, 25 miles per hour, yeah. uh, please slow down, or something of that nature, yeah. so that it will be called to people's attention instead of trying to get there from here in the fastest possible means. Yeah. We don't want anybody hurt. So do we need a motion? You do, sir, because I'll, this would change the traf traffic regulation. For both A I'll and B move. or just? Both, both A and B. Yeah. Both that a would B. make a, a uniform yeah. section on both sides of the intersection. Yeah. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Second. All those in favor? <coughs> Unanimous. <coughs> Next is Section 805-32, Stop Intersections, Vehicles, and Traffic, Article 4, Stop and Yield. Intersections, Turns, A, West on Esker Road at Lawrence Court. This, uh, Mr. Chairman, in fact, this one and the one that follows at number five is a request from the uh, residents out mm -hmm. on um, Lawrence Court. Um, we looked at the intersection. It's a three-way T intersection. Uh, Esker Road comes up and T's and meets uh, the top of that T being Lawrence Court, which feeds into Presidential and the rest of Esker. Um, the request... The request from the residents is that we make every street a stop intersection at that three-way intersection, which doesn't make a lot of sense um, from a regulatory standpoint. It's a T intersection. There should be a, a stop at the, at the top of the T coming up into the T, mm -hmm. uh, which is on um, um, west on Esker Road at Lawrence Court. So, so is that the one you're suggesting we have a motion on? It's the one we're suggesting because that would be the least uh, required from a regulatory standpoint, but would meet the warrants for traffic regulation. So that's number five or four? Number four, four sir. Number four. Yeah. Also move. Second. All those in favor? So we don't need to do something with five? Uh, the recommendation is not to do five, sir. Okay. I'll recommend that we don't do anything. Is there a consensus of that? Yes. If it doesn't work, we'll come back with you with something else. Okay, great. Closing comments. Can I get a, a new business thing? And I, I think it's really important. It's oh, take, yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot take, to go to new business. Yeah, five, five minutes. Uh, last week, as you know, uh, the stock market uh, shut down. Uh, they tell us that it was for, for tech. Um, China, in the last 30 days, has lost uh, the oh. equivalent of uh, one quarter of this country's GDP uh, in an annual year. That's $3 trillion. Uh, it's the world's second largest economy. Uh, Greece is uh, bankrupt. Uh, Puerto Rico is $70 billion in debt. The tsunami has started. Uh, it will continue through all of our lifetimes, and uh, it will continue through emerging markets, and it affects the stock market. In 2008, the town, uh, in its trust fund, and I was on the websites today, uh, lost millions of dollars. Uh, and we have uh, recaptured that. We're back up. Uh, we lost $2 million. We're some $3 million on top. And thank God that the government printed money and uh, juiced Wall Street with a trillion dollars in aid. And I think all of us could run our businesses pretty well if we had that kind of aid. So we're thankful for that. Um, in terms of trust funds, New Hampshire State, uh, Chapter 31, Powers and Duties, 
On section 31 through 33, there was some feedback. We would wanted to see reports from uh, the trustees that is with the Mackinson Company, I believe. Um, Mr. Mackinson had previously sent four attachments to us uh, that detailed the real nitty gritty of the performance of this $19 million that the, the town has. That was requested last week. Uh, that has not come forward. Mr. Ma Mr. Silberdick wants to wait till the 20th. I think when there's exigent uh, challenges in the world economy, we have $19 million. We've lost millions of dollars before. I think in accordance with Chapter 31 that we get better information back from those that are handling our $19 million. I think that they should meet more frequently. Section 3134 of 31 uh, regarding trust funds, New Hampshire state law, the trustees shall keep a record of all trusts in a record book or maintained in an electronic format which shall be open to the inspection of all persons in the town. Uh, we're not getting that. And there's a simple motion. <coughs> Excuse me. And Mr. Silver Dick couldn't make the meeting. Uh, we suggested we wait until the 20th. August 11, 2014, I met with Mr. Mackinson at the Galley Hatch Coffee Shop in an impromptu meeting. And that afternoon, he emailed me four attachments. Uh, we didn't have to go through Mr. Silberdick to get it. Mr. Mackinson was still with the firm. And they are the, uh, these will be part of a motion uh, to put on our website this data that can be done almost instantaneously by those that handle our funds, the Mackinson and Company. It would be the Portfolio Comparative Performance Review that Mr. Mackinson is a principal of that firm, emailed me directly. And I've copied Mr. Griffin, the Assistant Town Manager, the Finance Director, and Mr. Welch, these reports. A Position Performance Summary, which would be the second attachment. What Mr. Mackinson sent was the MS-9 in addition to those two, which is a report of the trust funds of the Town of Hampton for a given period, and then a fund snapshot. So there were four attachments that he sent basically instantaneously without going through chains uh, in conformance with both the spirit of the law and the explicit requisites of the law, especially in this modern era, I would make a motion that those reports be uploaded to a town website position uh, monthly and that uh, it be available uh, to all the people in town as the law, law requires. Um, do they not already have a website? I confess I haven't looked at it in the last, you know, they may. I'll, I'll second this motion so yeah. we can talk on it. Yeah, yeah uh, well, that, that's, I have looked at the website. Okay. Uh, the I selectmen here are, are to uh, um, lead the town in the prudential affairs of the town. Mm -hmm. uh, we've lost millions before. Uh, the um, grandchildren we have or will have uh, will pay the uh, stimulus that has yet been uh, unpaid to Wall Street. There have been some modest gains with, with that aid, but uh, quite frankly, uh, Wall Street doesn't perform that well. Uh, there have been billions and billions and billions of dollars of fines. Nobody's gone to jail. Uh, the whole street has been fined to the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars. There have been immense personal fortunes, and no one has been prosecuted. And we have $19 million. The $2 million we lost uh, is half the Exeter Road project. Half the Exeter Road project. We are asking with this motion for something that has already been done by a principal of the company. It's the town's money. There are four attachments. We want that on our website so oh, we can yeah. ask the prudent questions. Yeah. Thank Definitely. you. Is, is that on their website now, Phil? Or? Negative. Negative. All right. No. You can't. You can't get any of this information on the website. None of it. Any other comments? No, I think we, as Phil said, I think we should. The, you know, the people of this town have a right to know. Oh yeah. It, yeah. But not only as taxpayers, but as, as statute, they have right to know. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we have a right to demand that they give us that information so that we can put it on our website. They're required to file the MS-9. They're required by the state to file the MS-9 annually, I believe. That doesn't contain the information that was just being talked about, so okay. to speak. Oh, OK. It's, it's, it's one of the pieces. It's, it's a piece. Yeah. Have we ever asked for that before? 
I did last year. I was immediate that that same day, the same day invented by Mr. Mackinson. Requested it from the Mackinson company. Mr. Mackinson retired. I called Friday. There was no answer. I received an email back. But in this day and age, that's an instantaneous. Yeah, it should be right on the website. Yeah. That's instantaneous. Yeah. And, and for the townspeople, yeah. there will be further discussion. I know Mary Louise yeah. doesn't support it, but you will develop the information where other t other municipalities mm -hmm. and other governments are using our money, and they're paying three or four percent rate of return. And if we use our own money, we have to pay the same rate. So there's there's follow on to this, and information is power, and it's our money. But it's a simple request. It's been conformed to. It's a compliance with state law. <coughs> there's a motion. There's a second. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor? Unanimous. Yeah. Thank and you. then when is um, uh, Mr. Soberdick coming in to speak? He's not. He's not? I they're, saw they're, where they're, he invited us to come to their meeting. They're having a meeting on the 20th. Yeah. Um, he well, was you need to asked to come this evening to, to okay. address invite the issue. Invite him to come the next time again. I will invite him yeah. to come the 27th. Yeah, and see if he can come then. Okay. That's fine. Fine. Okay, no fine. any other closing comment? Any other uh, new business? Seeing none, closing comments. Any closing comments? The only one I have is uh, <clears throat> we have a we have a firefighter that's uh, going through some cancer treatment right now. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, on Monday at, I believe, 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, they have some barbers coming over to the fire station. Uh, and so if, if you're off and you want to come over and cut some hair... Uh, Fred's already been there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they have, uh, in show of support, there are going to be some uh, firefighters and other people that are going to uh, shave their heads so that uh, they can, uh, one, sh show awareness to what's going on, but two, yeah. also to support their brother. Yeah. Uh, it's also They also have some fundraising going on at the same time. Right. They have some nice uh, uh, raffle prizes. Uh, rumor has it there's even one of the female dispatchers that's going to do it. I'd encourage anybody to go over to the fire station on uh, Monday the 20th, about 10 o'clock. Uh, see some of the actions going on, see some of the support for their brother. <laughs> and uh, if you you got in your kindness of your heart to, to uh, open up your wallet a little bit and help them out, it'd be greatly appreciated. That's nice. Thank That's you, Russell. Motion for? I'll make a motion we adjourn. What At time? 8 to 16 by the clock here. Okay. Second. 8.21. Second. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Nice thank job. you, folks. Night.